Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing front door speakers on the 2004 Chevy Silverado. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the door panel and factory speaker. We'll head over to the bench, show you the new parts that we're going to install, including the speaker, bracket, and wire harness adapter. Then we'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now just a couple of notes, whether you have bows or non-bows, the technique is going to be the same. However, if you do have a bow speaker, often bows will have a lower impedance than typically the base speaker or an aftermarket speaker. So if you have bows and are retaining the fab clearing amplifier, we'll link those specific parts for your install down in the description. Now it depends on the year Silverado, some trims will have a coaxial and not a tweeter. In our case, we have a mid base and a tweeter here in the door, and we're gonna show you how to replace both. If you only wanna install a coaxial, that's fine too. We'll just show you the technique and the speaker needed for your install. First thing we need to do is pop off our sail panel. Now you can use a plastic vinyl panel tool. Careful with the screwdriver, but there's two clips and a tab here at the bottom. So we'll start here at the top. You can see here there's uh, two clips in the tab behind our door lock switch um, we need to basically pop this out there's going to be a screw behind it i start from the back side kind of work this on out just like that and it's going to expose a 932nd or seven millimeter screw underneath your handle here there's actually a hole it's kind of out of the frame of the shot but there is a screw right in there. This one's a lot longer, different from the last one, so keep them separate. This panel here needs to come off. Two clips at the bottom, tabs at the top. So you start at the bottom here, and you just get your finger to pop it loose. Okay. Two clips, one at the bottom, one at the side, and then the rest are tabs. And finally, at the bottom of the door, there's one more, and this screw is also different from the last two. Now, as mentioned before, all three screws are different, so remember where they go, because we'll have to reinstall them in that specific location. What we're gonna do next is lift the door off. We're gonna have a harness in your light, and then you'll have some various harnesses in your switch panel here. Each harness will have a little tab that you press in. It's all keyed differently, so it only goes back in the same location. So with all those harnesses disconnected, including our tweeter, let's go ahead and remove the door panel. Now here's our factory speaker. This guy right here, there's no screws in it. It's actually a tab that you push down in the top and it should roll out. Disconnect your harness on the back of the speaker. Essentially here at this point in time, we're done in the panel. We do need to still remove the tweeter out of the uh, door panel itself. But at this point, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're using for our install, first and foremost are the speakers that we've chosen to go with. Now, in our case, since we have a separate tweeter and mid base, we went with a component set to match that configuration from factory. Rockford Vosgate makes a great simple uh, component set to replace both that factory tweeter and the mid-range. If you don't want to mess with the tweeter, that's fine. You can simply just throw in a coaxial, meaning that tweeter is going to be mounted within the center of the speaker itself. Ours are going to be separate, being a component set. Now, this is the Rockford Fosgate Prime R165-S. This is basically a six and a half inch speaker, which works great because it's known that these can't fit a big speaker in this bracket. It doesn't really fit most six and a halfs, and it certainly doesn't fit six and three quarter inch. But this is the Metro 82-3002. It comes in pairs. We've already done the driver's side. Um, and the wiring harness adapter is the Metro 72-4568. Also comes in pairs. Right now, what we're going to do is grab our speaker, our mid-base here. It actually bolts up right into that bracket just fine with room to spare. 
which is why we chose these specific speakers because they work in this bracket perfectly. We'll line that up, we'll use the hardware provided, and we'll go ahead and get this all attached. Our harness adapter goes for our mid base here, and essentially it's already keyed and marked. These will plug into the back of the terminals of the speaker, and this one will plug into the vehicle. All right, so we got the speaker all in the bracket here. We got our harness adapter on. We put some high temperature Tessa tape just to protect our harness a little bit more in the door, but it simply hooks on there. Now you could also simply hook your tweeter connection right into that as well. There's a second set of terminals. They just use this kind of like a distribution block just to provide um, audio to the tweeter. The tweeter hat itself has a little passive crossover built within the tweeter. That's why there's no external crossovers here. So it's a very simple setup. However, there is a dedicated speaker connection to the tweeter itself. So we won't use these second set of terminals. We'll use the terminals or the connection dedicated for the tweeter in the door panel itself. Now here's our tweeter, our factory tweeter. It's held in with two, they're about 11 millimeter. They look like nuts, but they're not really. And in our experience, based on the age of the truck, when you try to remove that, it generally shears off this actual um, stud, unfortunately. But you can still put it just a nut and bolt there, and that's fine. We need to take off the grill, which is basically all these tabs that you just bend up all the way around here. Now, we were lucky enough they didn't shear off these, which is great. So... We'll go ahead and pop our tweeter out. All right, so we have our tweeter out here. Now, unfortunately, as we're removing it, one did shear off. It's okay. Uh, there's a hole that passes on through, and usually we'll use a nut and a bolt or a nut and one of these insert rivet nuts that are included with our speaker, and uh, that's going to allow us to mount this just fine. Now, at this time, we need to get this out. We're going to reutilize this bracket, but the tweeter is actually molded into the plastic itself. So what we're gonna do is actually modify this and we're gonna put a two inch hole cut out or just slightly smaller than that, uh, which we're gonna allow us to mount our specific tweeter in this bracket itself. Now I have a little template that I use to cut uh, holes for tweeters here. So we're gonna use that guiding hole, use our hole saw to cut the hole that we need to flush mount our tweeter. All right, so we cut a nice hole there and our tweeter will mount right in that location. It comes with a retaining pressure clip that we can put on here. To help start kind of center it and then we're going to use a little bit of hot glue to get it fixed permanently in place all right so we've glued that in there there is our flush mounted rockford fosgate tweeter there so the next thing is we need to wire this tweeter up now the factory tweeter had a harness that we cut off anyways and you'll notice it's identical to one of those metra 72-4568 harness adapters like we use for the mid-range in the door, and we can reutilize it for our tweeter connection. Now on these, blue is going to be your positive, gray is your negative. On our Rockford Fosgate, our red is our positive, so we're going to hook these together. Now if you don't have the means to solder, that's okay. You can certainly use crimp caps or butt connectors, just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts. They're just not designed for an automotive application. All right, there's our tweeter with our plug and play harness here. We'll put a screw through this bracket and then we'll secure it with the little nut cert that goes back behind the door panel. So let's get this mounted back in the door so we can get our grill back on as well. All right, so we've got our tweeter all mounted there. Here it is on the back side. Got our harness ready to go. At this point of time, let's head back to the car to start getting our speakers installed. All right, so we got that hooked up here. These little tabs go in the bottom. Just 
snap into place just like so. Now it's always a good idea to double check to ensure that the speaker is working properly before you put the door panel on. Then we'll hook up our tweeter that goes to this harness and uh, get everything reassembled. That's about it for this install. If you like any of the parts that we used, we'll link them down in the description for you, along with any other recommended parts for your install. Now, if you want to know how you do the rear speakers, this happens to be the extended cab, but we don't have the speakers in stock for that. Uh, but we can show you how to remove the door panel, which is a pretty easy and quick process to do. Um, and uh, link those parts in the description. If you have the full-size cab, uh, with the four doors and not just the extended cab the rear door is almost Identical to this process and we can link those parts in the description as well Thanks again for watching be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw and don't forget to subscribe We post great content on the channel all the time and we will see you in the next video